Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Scott Luton and Greg White with you here on Supply Chain. Now, welcome to today's live stream. Greg, how you doing today? And we have you on mute, Gregory. We're going to fix that. That should be a simple button push. We're going to get that fixed, and we will have Greg with us. There we are, Greg. How you doing? All right. We still cannot hear you, Greg. We still have a little, hey, folks, it's a live show. Live program is great. And sometimes we have uh, a few technical issues, and we've got a little connection issue with the one only Gregory White. So we'll see if we get him in just a second. But regardless, folks, welcome to today's show. We've got a great, great conversation teed up. We're going to focus on a real practical discussion on the power of synchronized planning. Yes, synchronized planning. Um, who, maybe, who knows, uh, if Greg, you can hear me, that might be added to the Olympics in 2024. So it should be a great conversation. Do we have Greg back yet? And I do not think we do. All right, folks. So we're going to keep driving. So we've got a great show teed up here today. Great to have you here today. Looks like we've got a bunch of folks already in the cheap seats. Uh, Josh and Alan and, and many others. Uh, we want to hear your take on today's conversation as well. So, with no further ado, we're going while we work on Greg's connection there. I want to bring in our two featured guests here today: Christian Hirup, Solution Architect for Procurement and Planning with Orkla, and Ulrich Most, Solution Manager, Supply Chain Planning with SAP. Hey, hey, Christian, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Great to see you, great to see you. And Uli, how you doing? Very well, thanks. Great to see you as well. Truly a global conversation here today. We're going to see if we can't get Greg back with us in just a second. But in the meantime, we've got a lot to get to here today. And I want to start, folks, Uli and Christian and everyone out there, we're going to start with a, a special holiday because, folks, today, it is World Pasta Day. Yes, you said that. Uh, I said that right. World Pasta Day. So while humanity, Christian and Oli, we've all across, across the globe have been enjoying pasta since around, I don't know, 5000 BC or perhaps longer. This day, World Pasta Day, was officially established in 1995 by the first official World Pasta Congress. So somewhere there's going to be parades, but I bet there's going to be lots of pasta eaten today, Christian and Uli. So I want to use that as a backdrop, and I want to ask you both your favorite pasta, and Christian, we'll start with you, your favorite pasta or place to get it, Christian. I think I'll go for uh, pasta carbonara. Okay. Simple, but uh, really nice. Do you like to pair that with a nice adult beverage from time to time as well, Christian? Could be, yeah. <laughs> Christian's not revealing any secrets here today, Uli. That's good. All right, so pasta carbonara. Uh, Uli, how about you, your favorite pasta? Yeah, I think actually this is the, the pasta, which the spaghetti, which is prepared directly within the uh, Parmesan, you know, in the half uh, Parmesan. And I mean, that's, that's yeah, I like that pretty much with truffles. Oh. And luckily we have a place very close in our town where you can mm. get it. You paint a, and describe a pretty picture, Uli. Uh, all that sounds delicious. And I'm going to add my favorite pasta is all of it, Christian and Uli. All of it. I can't, we can't get enough pasta here. We try to keep it, you know, in moderation, but man, especially fresh made pasta, you can't beat that, right, Christian, Uli? Um, all right. So let's see. I think we've been testing. Y'all know how stuff goes. You know, global supply chain, we live in a world of troubleshooting, right? So we're going to see if we can't get Greg to rejoin here in just a second. Let me check in here before we move on. Uh, all right. So Greg, let's swoosh him in and let's see if we've got uh, Greg White. No, we don't. Okay. So we're going to keep driving. All right. So Christian Uli, um, as, we've getting, uh, as we're getting to know you both here, we've talked a little bit of food. Of course, we're going to get into synchronized planning uh, directly. But before we do, you know, context is really important, right? We can't get enough context in this world we're living in. So I want to start with uh, Christian for the handful of folks that may not know uh, about Orkla. Can you please share just a really brief company profile uh, of the organization, Christian? Yeah, sure. 
Uh, so Orclays is actually a uh, Norwegian uh, investment company. So its uh, scope is sort of brands and, and consumer oriented. Uh, yeah, roughly 20,500 employees. Uh, turnover around 60 billion uh, Norwegian kroner. So okay. that's yeah, 5 billion euros. Uh, it's divided in uh, yeah, portfolio companies. So it has 12 different portfolio companies where, for example, Orkla Foods Europe would be one of them. Mm. And then each of these sort of uh, portfolio companies has like several yeah, entities uh, underneath. And I would say main areas, uh, foods, confectioner snacks, uh, food ingredients, health, uh, home, personal care. So, yeah, fast moving consumer goods. Okay. Is the summary. And yeah, from my side, uh, I would say uh, IT wise is a little bit scattered system landscape. Yeah. But uh, we are for sure executing on, on that roadmap, right, with uh, SAP and IBP. Love that. You're on the journey. We're all on a journey of sorts uh, yep. to get better and better. Uh, and really quick, Christian, you've been with the organization. I know your career has been longer, but with Oracle, you've been there, what, about four or five years? Is that about right? Uh, roughly four years. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So, Uli, what else, you know, given your collaboration with Christian, uh, Christian and the Orkla team. Anything else you want to add to what folks may need to know for context about our conversation today about Orkla? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, maybe one topic which might be interesting uh, for our discussion today is, um, you know, the whole product portfolio uh, Orkla is managing. Yeah? So many uh, folks might think that this is a typical consumer product company, you know, with a standardized uh, yeah, production and, and logistics scenarios. Yeah, so um, which which also makes it then easier or potentially easier for planning. But um, I think that's that's not completely true, isn't it, Christian? Mm. No, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we have a quite wide variety of, of products, different kind of production setups. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a really mix of, of things. I would say makes mm. it a bit complex. Yeah. Mm. Variety is certainly the spice of global supply chain, huh? Uli and Christian. And no shortage, it sounds like, with Orkla. Um, all right, so let's do this. Before we move on, uh, I want to say hello to a few folks. I mentioned on the front end, Christian and Uli, about how this is going to be a truly, like most of ours here, a global conversation. Man, we've got folks from around the world, from Pearl up in New York to Henry in Peru. Uh, Josh Goody is back with us up in Seattle. Great to see you, Josh. Uh, let's see here. Mark from Sydney, Australia. Love that. And of course, our good old friend TV, Tom Valentine here in the Metro Atlanta area. Great to see you, Tom. And y'all stay tuned. And hey, again, we want to hear from y'all as we work through this conversation with Christian Uli and hopefully Greg soon. We shall see. Um, all right. So we're going to be talking about the power of synchronized planning here today, Christian and Uli. That's been a big part of this journey that uh, Christian, you and your team have been leading in, in, you know, in collaboration with Uli and uh, uh, our friends over SAP. So Christian, for starters, how would you define synchronized planning for our audience? Make sure we're, everyone's with us here together, Christian. Well, I think that synchronized planning is, is sort of a, a strategy or a process where uh, he, the aim is sort of to connect uh, all the different levels um, in your supply chain right so we want to get that connection from the demand to the network uh, supply plan uh inventory right and put that into production planning and detail scheduling mm. so get that sort of yeah all of it, it is into one sort of uh, big plan mm. big plate get it all on that big plate uh going yeah. back to the pasta yeah. analogies right uli what else would you add to that definition that Christian's sharing? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty pretty complete. But I mean, at SAP, the definition is um, yeah. I mean, beyond the internal, you're going beyond the internal value chain of a company, yeah, and uh, uh, which which includes then orchestration of processes um, across the entire network, yeah, involving the customers, the suppliers, logistics providers. 
Um, yeah, but also the internal alignment, uh, internal departments, um, you know, alignment of operational and financial plans. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, the goal here. What what Orkla or Christian is uh, uh, focusing today, I think it's it's a little bit more these now definition synchronized planning for production. Yeah, so which is centered around um, yeah supply planning and production planning. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, but yeah, it's a big topic. Yeah. <laughs> It's a really big topic, uh, and I'm looking forward to diving in more to y'all's experience as you implement it uh, at Orkla and some of the um, some of the good, the bad, because there's always challenges associated with any change, right, as we're striving for continuous improvement. So we're going to get into that in just a second. And, hey, I love T-Squared holding down the Fort Force on YouTube, uh, sticking with the food analogies, bring on the many hors d'oeuvres of supply chain management. We Hey, we are. We're working on the good stuff. And Peter... Stangelan, great to have you back with us from Norway. Stop talking, take action. That's what we're all talking about here today. Um, you know, getting, uh, um, acting on the opportunities that exist to lift supply chain performance, increase it, make make work easier and more productive and more successful. Um, all right, so let's keep driving here. Christian, um, let's talk about some of the benefits uh, that synchronized planning brings to the table. What would you say some of those things are? I think the most important thing for us has been to get sort of that closed uh, loop then between uh, demand and that overall supply uh, network plan uh, and sort of get that into that detailed production planning that we in the end needs. Mm. So try to get those production plans in line with whatever capacity constraint we, we might have. Uh, and I think, yeah, once you have that, right, you can also start then optimizing inventory levels, uh, cost balancing, right, supply and demand across the whole of the, of the supply chain network. Mm. So closing the loop, striking that balance. Yeah. Uli, what else would you add to some of the benefits organizations can realize with synchronized planning? Yeah, I think uh, it's really, it's all about visibility and responsiveness. Um, and this is key improving, let's say, the dis decision making in, in a company. Yeah? So, and, and we at SAP, we, we aim really at uh, for, for digital twins, yeah? for supply networks, for factories, yeah? to provide this real time visibility uh, into the operational performance yeah? of the full supply chain. And once company has this foundation in place, um, uh, it allows them to select the right KPIs to steer the company and to steer to individual targets. I think that's uh, that's and this, of course, uh, you know, is, is uh, really for different industries, for different uh, company sizes. Uh, yeah, all all needs to be treated differently. Yeah, and then mm. right. Uli, well said, and, and I like that you mentioned uh, selecting the right. Uh, the appropriate KPIs because we want we want those KPIs those key performance indicators to be aligned so that all the various functions and departments across the enterprise are pulling in the same direction. Would you say, Uli? Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's a, that's the that's the underlying um, yeah goal for everyone. Yeah? So to have this transparency and one goal which the full company is working towards. Yeah. So and this brings the the benefits. Yes. Yeah. Instead of got to eliminate the tug of wars, right? Where you got competing KPIs, pulling teams and organ organization in different directions. That's a great point, uh, Uli. Um, yeah. All right. So Christian, um, let's talk about um, synchronized planning as SAP offers it and defines it and implements it. Um, you know, a lot of what we talk in pre-show is its ability to handle capacity constraints and bottlenecks really effectively. So, uh, Christian, can you share a few examples that you've seen? I think if, if you use uh, sort of some of the input that, that you get, and get, right, let's say demand sensing, you can use AI, machine learning uh, to improve sort of the, the focus accuracy, uh, use that as an input. Uh, we can use sort of inventory optimization to get uh, that optimal levels of, of safety stock at each node. But I think that the main thing here for us is we run an SAP IVP, sort of an optimizer or a finite heuristic uh, model. 
So it means we can use then capacity and then capacity constraints on individual resources, or if you have like pooled or shared resources, uh, uh, maybe that's where you, your bottlenecks or constraints are. And uh, by doing this, we can sort of get a, a feasible plan. And that is for then what we're feeding into uh, PPD as for detailed scheduling and then production planning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, Uli, anything to add there in, in terms of uh, some of the benefits, some of the uh, ability for SAP synchronized planning to get around those those pesky capacity constraints and bottlenecks and other challenges that come with running a global organization. Uli, any additional comments, sir? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's pretty typical what right now Christian described. But I think the key is here really to to have a finite uh, planning environment in place yeah so an APS in the end advanced planning system uh, which provides then um, you know creation of feasible plans which uh, can hand it over to execution and seamlessly be executed there in this environment um, I think this is key and um, I mean of course it's uh, it, it, it varies across the different industry again and the different complexities which we see in factories um, you know how much uh, of these constraint modeling you need yeah and of course there's the key to manage all this complexity and yeah? so and mm -hmm. i think um so that's 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 when it comes to um your know, secrets of success yeah so that's uh, absolutely true to to manage um yeah the right complexity level in this space yeah well said uli because we're not eliminating complexity we got to manage complexity right uh gregory good afternoon great to have you back how you doing hey guys sorry i'm late <laughs> Way, well, hey, you know, uh, the, the, there's always bumps in the road, right? In this uh, global remote technology world we live in. But great to have you back. And Greg, I don't know if internet. you had a chance. Yeah, <laughs> the internet. internet, yes. Um, I'm not sure if you had a chance to, to as we were troubleshooting, to kind of uh, listen in to the front first half of the conversation. But um, whether it's synchronized planning, whether it's what we're doing there at Orkla, whether it's some of Uli's additional commentary, any, any initial thought here, Greg, before I move any further? Yeah, I mean, it's such an integrated world, right? I mean, first you have to get your own house in order, right? Have all of the right planning people talking to all the right execution people, along with all the right finance people and all that sort of thing. And then you have to do the same thing essentially throughout your, not just your enterprise, but throughout your entire ecosystem. So mm. having all of that, sort of synchronized and syncopated and all those other things um, <laughs> that, you know, that, that make, that make sure that everyone is in sync um, is, is really critical. So uh, it's interesting with what, you know, with what Christian and the team are doing at Oracle, I got to hear bits of it as I was panicky, panicky and trying to figure <laughs> out what was going on with the internet. Um, but um you know, it's not an, un and Uli said this, it's not, this is not an uncommon challenge, right? And lots of companies tackle this, but some uh, with less broad vision than others. And that's what IBP and all of the, all of this synchronized planning, that's what that enables is, is for you to have this back and forth internally and externally with your trading partners. Mm. Well said, Greg, man. Uh, whether your attention is divided or undivided, you don't miss a thing, Greg White. How about that, Christian and Uli? Um, all right. So, <laughs> Christian, I want to I want to uh, kind of switch gears a bit, and we want to compare and contrast with some other things, uh, other approaches, other methodologies that are that are uh, found a lot out in the industry. So, first off, Christian, tell us about uh, when you when you compare and contrast uh, sales and operations planning (SNOP) mm. versus synchronized planning. Uh, what are some of the some of the um, you know, uh, contrasts you see there, Christian? Yeah, I think synchronized planning is not exactly an extension of, of the sort of sales and operations uh, planning. I would say that SNOP, I mean, that's a well-known approach uh, to get that uh, demand and supply uh, in balance, right? Uh, you, you need that collaboration between the, the different um, organization and then the different like sales operations, finance, other functions to get that uh, corporate plan 
to align sort of well, what is the business strategy. Mm. I, I mm. would more say that SNOP is a key component of synchronized planning, but not the only one, I would say. Okay. Outstanding. Uh, Uli, I'm going to get you to weigh in, and I'm going to get uh, Greg to give some comments as we analyze these two, you know, Snow P and synchronized planning. Your thoughts, Uli? Yeah, I think the maybe this, this term synchronized planning is, is rather new, yeah, not not as established as, as, as Snow P, as, as, uh, as Christian also mentioned. Um, maybe it also includes other acronyms, yeah, because we like acronyms, yeah. <laughs> Sales and operation execution, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, for the more granular tactical uh, operational horizon, you know, that's um, that's something which is then also part of synchronized planning. I would, um, but yeah, as, as Christian mentioned, synchronized planning has a broader definition, yeah, on, on the horizontal dimension, but also on the vertical in the integration, yeah, um, of in involving internal and external stakeholders of the full supply chain, yeah. Mm. Uli, good point. Much broader, it seems. Uh, Greg, your thoughts yeah. when, when you think about SNOP and synchronized planning? Yeah, I think Christian nailed it with saying it's just a segment of of a synchronized planning environment. Um, and I think any of us who've experienced SNOP planning processes are probably very thankful for that because they leave so many SNOP over the years has left so many gaps unclosed and doesn't solve the problem. It's often more of a negotiation really than a planning thing, trying to get the sales <laughs> salespeople, right, to be ra rational with their forecast, trying to get the ops people to stop sandbagging that they can't produce that much, trying to get the finance people from stuffing the finance plan down our throats, or at least in the States, guys, that's how it happens. Finance goes and commits to the marketplace, and then they jam that plan down your throat, and you have to figure out how to hit it. And sometimes that's simply not possible. And I think that synchronization gives you more touch points. It gives you more of a, a integration between those entities so that that you can actually form a rational, let's say, a rational finance plan, a rational sales plan, and a rational response to that vis-a-vis -vis your operations and production and sourcing to, to make all of that happen. And it kind of creates more of a, um, well, I mean, it is a synchronization, right? But I mean, it kind of creates more of a conversation around it rather than a negotiation about it. Wow. Uh, poetic. Uh, and I love how you described that negotiation uh, component of it, Greg. Uh, hey, really quick. For our that was my reality our anyway, and many companies' <laughs> realities. I, I bet many folks can can identify with that reality and relate to it. Uh, Alan, it's great to have you here today. Alan says, I call synchronized concurrent planning everything, everywhere, all at once. That is also poetic, Alan. Great to have you here today. And Charles Walker from the ATL. Great to have you here today and, and see you. Uh, really enjoy your perspective regularly. Um, okay, Christian, Uli, and Greg, as we continue to compare and contrast and as we continue to celebrate some of the acronyms that Uli uh, accurately mentioned, we do love our acronyms, right? Uh, right. DDMRP, uh, demand-driven MRP. So Christian, when you think about DDMRP and synchronized planning, how do you view those two? Uh, approaches? I would actually say that those are uh, two different strategies for working with, with uh, supply chain planning. Uh, I mean, DDMRP is focusing on that yeah, strategically placed inventory buffers and more of uh, material control replenishment and decoupling of, of sort of your, your supply and demand. So I, I would say then that synchronized planning is, is a bit broader and more comprehensive strategy and than if you compare them with, with the DDIMRP. Okay. So it uh, sounds like uh, SNOP and synchronized planning may be second or third cousins. And it sounds like DDMRP and synchronized planning may be from two different family trees. Uh, we'll see. Uli, how would you weigh in uh, with these two strategies? Yeah, I agree. Uh, Demand-driven MRP is, is, a, is a specific methodology uh, to manage flow in a company, which uh, which includes steps for, for planning and execution. I mean, everything aligning to demand. Yeah, So I think that's the key. Um, I think if, if we compare this um, to traditional planning process, uh, I think uh, it's rather also, I mean, it's not that new, but it's uh, it's not ages um, or um, 
Um, I mean, uh, so the concept, but um, it definitely involves then if, if companies go into this direction, it involves change management because, I mean, the way then how planners deal with this uh, methodology, um, yeah, is, uh, is, 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 is different, needs to be differently handled, handled. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's we as SFP, we, we support, I mean, many planning strategies and, and methodologies, and including DDM MRP, demand driven MRP. Um, and by, by the way, our, our solutions um, which we are talking here are all, all certified to be compliant with regards to this methodology yeah so um but yeah it's it's yeah it's i mean we, we definitely have seen adoption and and uh, companies with success implementing that yeah so um it's very uh, exciting to follow absolutely mm. good stuff there uli all right so greg your thoughts when we think about ddmrp and synchronized planning I think considering what um, I think I just caught briefly when you guys were talking earlier, um, the whole notion of of constraints can be handled by synchronized planning. I would ar argue that DDMRP is yet another segment of synchronized planning along with the execution upon learning what the constraints are. Hey, here's what demand is going to require. Here's what here's, you know, over time and here's what um the market or our sources can provide let's say and so here's how we need to adjust we need to buy more here less there whatever build more buy more whatever um, i think a synchronized planning if it includes your external trading partners which it should really encompasses a lot of what ddmrp is trying to accomplish and frankly may even um i wouldn't say obsolete it but it definitely changes it, its position in regard to how um, how you manage things, because you can get in front of these things with a, with a good synchronized planning process. Mm. Um, all right. So as we kind of move into the next segment, uh, and I appreciate all of y'all weighing in on, on some of the similarities and some of the big differences between some of these different strategies. Um, but you know, there is. Um, difficulty associated with anything worth doing in this life, perhaps, and certainly any kind of uh, continuous improvement, lift, project, initiative, there's always going to be some speed bumps. Uh, so Christian, as we look to kind of keep it real here today, what were some of the challenges associated with implementing SAP synchronized planning uh, in your experience? I think yeah, for a start, uh, data quality and, and data migration, uh, I mean, it, it's critical for any IT or planning project, uh, and I think synchronized planning is not an exception here. Uh, integration, I mean, we're talking about yeah, different tools, uh, different system. How do you integrate them between IBP uh, and then uh, SAP S4? You need to have that pretty much uh, seamless, that uh, type of integration. Change management. Uli mentioned it before. I mean, uh, synchronized planning uh, could then introduce uh, some new ways of, of working, new ways of planning, and spans across some different functions. So you definitely need to get uh, sort of the, the whole organization on board uh, when you're doing this kind of change. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, customization. Um, it is a quite complex setup, but I mean, you, you cannot avoid uh, that each business has its specific needs. So you still need to do customization and, and uh, optimization to make that fit right in, into your company and your planning process. So, uh, yeah, it, it definitely requires uh, quite some work to get it in place uh, for sure. Yeah. So, Greg, if I was keeping count there, uh, data, integration, change management, customization, some of those challenges, of course, those can be associated with a lot of different uh, projects and initiatives uh, across global business. What, are, what? Pick one out. Uh, there's four, Greg, that I heard Christian share. What do you think is um, that should be really front and center for folks as they lean into um, projects like this, initiatives like this, Greg? I really think it's change management because the – how you set your sort of North Star, your goals, your desired outcomes really drives the entirety of the rest of the project. It drives how you integrate, what you integrate with, right? 
how how much quality and what data you need um and, and then how much customization because customization always frightens me when we talk about these solutions because so many of these technologies are built to support best practice and a lot of what customization does is it drags these advanced systems back into the dark ages where companies just refuse to let go of their old processes. And I think if you start with change management, you start with the outcomes that you want to reach, you work back to building the acceptance in the organization that the processes need to change, that we can't keep doing things the way we are doing them and expect to get better results. So it, it really comes down to how you set the mentality of the people. And it is so crit critical to give them that one desired outcome, that major desired outcome that you're seeking and then work back from there. Mm. Greg, I love that. And I'm, I'm glad you picked that one out. And you mentioned outcomes. It's one of our favorite things to talk about here, right? The, the, the so what, right? You, you overcome all. Yeah. <laughs> I love the word too, maybe. But, you know, you overcome so much that, as you, you you laid out there, Greg, and, and Christian, as you kind of walked us through. But there is such a great payoff. So despite those challenges, Christian, that you mentioned, what's been one of your favorite outcomes related to implementation? I think uh, right now we we can process like a 24 months horizon, uh, yeah, bring it from the demand plan, move that into a supply network. Uh, we can do a production plan, we can run an MRP, and we can basically do that on a daily basis uh, if needed. So we, I think we, we can uh, sort of create that finite constraint plan that is feasible for production that we talked about. Yep. And we can sort of process and look that around pretty fast now. So I think that is one of the yeah, uh, main sort of advantages or the best outcome of, of sort of setting this up. Okay. So it sounds like me and Uli, I'm gonna get your thoughts here. Sounds like y'all gained some, some uh, organizational agility that is certainly helping you to manage some of the complexity that is just part inseparably part of the journey that we're on. We touched on earlier. Uli, what would you add there? Yeah, I think you mentioned it already. I mean, the, um, the, the, the agility, which brings this uh, right now for the business, I mean, to be able to respond to, yeah, customer demand changes, um, supply changes. I mean, this this is all about you know effectiveness, or, um, yeah, in speed, or in in decision making. Yeah, so and I think uh, yeah, it might be a still a journey. Yeah, to um, and I can guess that. Yeah, so but uh, definitely on the, it, it's it's right now the, the best foundation to have this in place um, to for for then further improvements in the future. I would guess. Uh, Mm. So you're, what you're saying, Uli, is even when we successfully plan, there's still change. We still have change. What? Greg, <laughs> right. Uh, Greg, what'd you hear there? How have we survived the as supply chain professionals <laughs> when things change all the time? Oh, constant, constant. But, but Greg, as you heard Christian share some of their early gains, early outcomes, and the impact it's had on their ability to succeed daily, as he put it. What else did you hear there, Greg? Well, if there's anything we need, it's agility, right? I mean, everybody knows that their supply chain is fragile. We all learned that over the last, can you believe it, three years now. Um, and, uh, and I think we all knew that in this industry. We all knew that supply chains were fragile. We dealt with it every day. Um, what, we d what really has changed is now the consumer knows. Those of us who just buy goods, we know that it's not just, let's say, co-op's fault if if they're out of something, right? It goes through, there's enough fault to be to be spread around the entire supply chain and consumers are well aware of that. And it's started to impact the brand reputation of more than just the final sellers to the to the consumer, to those who provide the goods as well. And um, I, and I think we've all experienced that firsthand. Right, either a quality or availability, or you know, or, or reliability, whatever um, cost uh, has been impacted, and people know where that comes from now. So there is no place to hide, right? There is no brand safe from fragility in their supply chain, and that is high, high stakes. Mm. Well said. There's no place to hide. Uh, certainly uh, something that um, we're all leaning into and embracing uh, here in 2023. And Greg, I love that's like one of your mantras. And I think it's so 
folks need to hear that and to just just embrace it. Um, all right. So really quick, we're going to talk touch more on integration here in just a second, Christian. That's one of the things you mentioned a minute ago. Uh, Rob Haddock, great to see you here today, Rob. Hopefully you may have brought your bagpipe. Rob is a professional bagpipe player, Christian and Uli and Greg. In theory, Rob says, all suppliers should benefit from synchronized planning, all upstream materials and downstream warehouse and transportation requirements. Well said, Rob. Uh, Kasim and Muhammad, great to have you all here today, as well as Melinda from Michigan. Okay, so Christian, you mentioned uh, of the four challenges associated with implementation. You mentioned integration. However, uh, it's really uh, um, a double-edged sword because there's some great integration opportunities that exist with SAP synchronized planning. Tell us more about that, Christian. Yeah, depending a little bit on, on sort of your business and what it is you, you want to achieve. But uh, you can do uh, two things. You can use sort of an order-based uh, integration. Uh, and right now, this, this comes with a real-time uh, integration. So you can actually sync that order-based planning in, in uh, SAP IVP directly with your sort of uh, production planning and then scheduling in S4. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other way of doing it is you can do a key figure integration. So you will be sending over like a target supply between IVP and then an S4. And I, I would say that in general, this key figure integration would be more suitable for, for maybe a make to stock or make to forecast uh, scenarios where you're actually then creating the production orders based on this sort of aggregated uh, forecast or aggregated demand coming in. So two different ways also of doing it. Okay. Uh, Uli, anything you'd like to add from an um, integration opportunity perspective? I know it's good that you that Christian mentioned it. I mean, it, it just shows the, you know, the, the options and flexibility which we provide here. And um, yeah, it's also no no doubt that this this comes right now only let's say more recently. Yeah? So there um, there there is the notion you know of investing here more into these capabilities to provide more um, out of the box functionality which customers can leverage um, and to manage the end to end process. Yeah, so it's yeah. So uh, Greg, one of the things uh, one of the themes really Christian and Uli both spoke to there was that flexibility. Uh, that's always a good thing. Options are a great thing. Greg, any comments there based on integration or in, maybe in the, in the broader sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think in, you know, in the broader sense, what the flexibility that the synchronized planning gives you is so critical because consumers are so fickle because things are changing so rapidly. Prices are changing rapidly. The economy is changing rapidly, at least here in the States. Um, you know, we're starting to see a shift in demand from the consumer. Um, we've run out of other people's money. We're not as good at it here in the States. Um, we haven't done it for as long as they have in Europe, but um, we're starting to run out, run out of other people's money. And so spending is going down. And um, I think that kind of flexibility, the fickle consumer, if you want to call it that, or kind of chasing or trying to preempt the changes in the economy, which have been dramatic and erratic over the last several years, that flexibility is really critical for that. So um, I think that's probably the biggest biggest benefit that you get is this holistic, I can't remember who it was who said everything everywhere all the time, but it, it is yes. kind of that. Having eyes on everything everywhere all the time enables you to have that flexibility and employ your agility to reduce the fragility of your supply chain ability <laughs> <laughs> i knew where you're going with that greg i knew it yeah and that was <laughs> i just ran out of illities but uh <laughs> but i mean it, uh, poetic it, it, all of that all of that is true though i mean you know uh, the goal here is to allow these companies to be more preemptive but also responsive because as we just talked about it doesn't matter what you plan for what happens happens and you have to plan for how to respond and, and recover frankly in a lot of cases to what actually happens versus what you planned. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and that was Alan, by the way. Alan, uh, with that quote you referenced. And Alan, great to have you. Better trademark that soon, Alan. It's going to be back on uh, T-shirts everywhere soon. I, I think somebody um, has said it before, but thanks oh, okay. for bringing it up here, Alan. <laughs> 
All right. So Christian, 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 I, I want to uh, give your team, you and your team a high five because not only um, does the business go on, regardless as you're implementing these things, any initiative, technology or otherwise, and you got to still deliver on the business and, and meet those, those uh, consumer demands, right? Customer demands. But to overcome some of the challenges, again, associated with, with about any project out there, you know, we talked about data and integration, change management, customization, you name it, to deliver these outcomes so far that we've already talked about. We'll have to have you back and put our finger back on the pulse of the Oracle team and, and find out the other goodness that um, uh, was delivered by synchronized planning uh, with Uli and the team. So, Uli, let's do this. I bet there's some folks out there that are hearing this conversation and they're like, man, I want some of that too, Greg. Uh, you know, I want some of what Christian, Christian and their team has. So, Uli, tell us, how can, uh, how would you suggest that SAP can help other organizations find more success like this? Uli, your thoughts. Yeah, um, you know, SAP is a technology provider for enterprises since um, since more than 50 years here. So, but honestly, on the on the adoption of best practices and processes, uh, I think there's, there's always room for improvement. I mean, this is never stopping, yeah. And, and this is especially true in the uh, in area of advanced planning. Yeah? So um, the complexity needs to be addressed smartly, I would say. Yeah? So uh, and what we do here is to learn from our large customer base. I mean, uh, of all the different industries and sizes of companies. Yeah, to take really what has proven to be successful in many years of operations and the history. Um, and this was might have been in the past maybe only be possible with customizations. And this. I mean, this word, this bus, this word, I mean, was was mentioned, but this is, I mean, nobody likes it. It's associated with costs and complexities. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, we take many of these best practices, um, which we which we've seen, and and uh, in our standard solution, and provide them out of the box. Yeah. So um, I think that's really a big shift here, and I think synchronous planning is a kind of a very good example for that approach. Yeah. So um, to help customers really to, to succeed right now in this domain space. Yeah. Mm. So, um, and, and, and Greg, I'm going to get your final, your patented, the one only key takeaway here in a second. But before we get there, I want to make sure folks know how to connect with Uli and Christian. And we've got some great resources I want to drop here in just a second. But uh, Uli, if folks want to connect with you and the SAP team and uh, maybe over a delicious plate of pasta and adult beverage as you talk business and figure out a better path ahead, how can folks connect with you, Uli? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's I think one source, and um, and also of course my my email is also uh, you can derive it, but not with the with my shortcut Uli. It's Ulrich Point at SAP dot com. <laughs> okay, man, that's that's uh, Greg. That's bold. Dropping the email out there, you're gonna you're gonna hear from. That's the job. Uh, I, that's right. I'm, I I can't wait. I want to hear how many you get, Uli. Yes. <laughs> yes, we'll be counting. Uh, Uli, great. I uh, really enjoyed that. Appreciate that. You know, folks, connect with Uli. Have a conversation. Lean into a better way, uh, if not for you, for your team, right? Um, Christian, uh, you and the Oracle team, again, congrats on um, uh, the, the the outcomes thus far. How can folks learn more about Oracle and maybe connect with you, Christian? Yeah, I think my <clears throat> my last name may be, be uh, difficult to pronounce, but it makes it easy to find on LinkedIn. So <laughs> feel free to connect here. Yeah. Uniqueness is a good thing, uh, Christian. Yeah. That yes, is a good indeed. thing. Yeah. Uh, well, really appreciated um, uh, the the case study, the story, the um, you know current state, and where you are going. Because uh, we all need sunglasses. It sounds like it's a very mm -hmm. bright future. Um, ahead. But folks, there's some great resources that Uli and SAP team brought. Um, we're going to drop a couple links in there uh, into the chat. Uh, but y'all check out this. I think I've got a little graphic right here. Um, I love I love stories. I love storytelling, especially related to supply chain. So one of the resources that Uli and team brought is supply chain planning success stories. So there's a link to that uh, we're dropping in the chat. Y'all check that out and then uh, reach out to Uli. Uh, and bring your questions because I bet Uli is ready to answer them. Uh, we also have, in in a broader sense, um, we've got more thought leadership on supply chain chain uh, su supply chain planning in general from the SAP team. That we're going to drop that link in the chat as well. All right, so Greg, before we bid adieu uh, to our new friends Christian and Uli and all the folks tuned in from around the globe. 
Um, when you think of one thing, folks forget everything else from this great conversation with Uli and Christian. What's the one thing that they cannot um, uh, afford to forget from today's chat? Well, you know, when you ask me for one, you're always going to get two. One is uh, <laughs> you should know that Uli is from southern Germany because he pronounces his name Ulrich, not Ulrich. And um, that's something valuable to know. Uh, the other is, am I wrong? No, it's <laughs> not. Uh, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dodged a bullet there. Um, but uh, I, when I learned to speak German, I learned Southern German. So um, when, uh, and the other is, look, with this synchronized planning, do think of it. Don't think of it as, as um, uh, an extension. I think that's the most important statement that we had of, SNOP or DDMRP or any of that, think of it as more encompassing than that, that as, as taking the inputs um, or the goals from that and creating a higher level goal and outcome for your organization where those things or elements of those things can play a part, but they are uh, extended and expanded throughout and beyond the organization so that so that you don't have so many of the, I know people are going to visualize this, so many of the problems that you have even after you've conducted, say, your SNOP process or how much behind the curve you feel when you are dealing with a DDMRP problem still. The idea is to get ahead of those problems, to plan for those problems, and to have those recovery plans in place as part of the synchronization so that you don't have to panic every time, doggone it, people, your people, your customers, your consumers don't, don't operate towards your plan, which we have just established almost never happened. So, uh, right. So it, it gives you that flexibility. It also gives you a plan B and often a plan C that allows you to respond to these things when inevitably things don't go as planned. Yes. Yes. Plan B, plan C, plan D, all the way through plan Z. That's what we need more and more of these days. Uh, Greg, I really uh, enjoy uh, uh, your your final take on things. And I love the BOGO, right? The buy one, get one free. We always get a couple extra ones. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but beyond that, Uli and Christian, thank you so much for carving some time out and sharing sharing y'all's experiences and, and your achievements so far with our organization, uh, Christian Earp with Orkla. Christian, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Thank you. Uh, and Ulrich, Ulrich Most uh, with SAP, really enjoyed your perspective. Keep up the great work. And uh, we look forward to having you back soon. Thank you. All right. Uh, so folks, uh, now the onus is on you. Now we've laid out what I think is a great uh, story with real outcomes over the last uh, hour or so. Mm -hmm. But now deeds, not words. You got to take something, take an idea, take a success, a win, a perspective, a thought, you name it from this panel here and put it in action. Do something with it. And with that, on behalf of our entire team here at Supply Chain, now Scott Luton challenging you to do good, to give forward, and to be the change. And we'll see you next time right back here on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody.